Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today this is going to be the seventh video of my series where I teach you guys React from the beginning. And in the last video we created this kind of like login page and we worked on like states and some other properties in React. But today I wanted to make a small video that it's going to basically cover some important topics that don't deserve like a full video on it. So I'm going to be talking today on ternary operators and some array destructuring so basically let me erase everything because we're gonna start from the beginning let me see okay wait let me do this and let me increase the size for you guys okay this is what we had before and I'm gonna erase everything and start from here okay okay so as you can see, we have a blank, a blank page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, which is going to be a state. So const, um, let me let me see, show header, set show header. OK. And this is going to be a use state, which is a Boolean. Okay, first of all, I'm going to be talking about um, ternary operators and wait, I didn't put an equal sign. Okay, and what are ternary operators? Basically, there is a different way to kind of make an if statement in, in, in JavaScript in general, which is very handy if, for example, we are working inside of, a, of the render function. So the, the basic syntax of a ternary, op of, like a, of using the ternary operator is basically you write a boolean, so a question. So for example, if I'm asking if show header, and show header in this case is a, is a boolean, which represents if I want to show a h1 tag or not. So I'm going to create an h1 tag saying hello. And I want to basically ask if, if we are supposed to show this hello tag or not. So in a normal if statement, we would ask something like this. If show if show header, then then I don't know return the h1 right. However, since we're working inside of the inside of the render function, there's a way that is a lot better. And how do we do this? Is by basically just writing the boolean or the the question. So show header, then putting a question mark right next to it, and this is basically asking. If show header, then we write whatever we want. So let's write h1 and hello. And then if we want to create an else statement, we just write a, a semicolon. Wait, uh, no, not a semicolon, just a colon. And here we can write the, the other, like the else. So let me just write h1, no hello. So basically, this is this is the same as asking if show header is true, then show the hello h1, and else show the no hello h1. I hope this makes sense, right? So we're gonna use this inside of the inside of our render, cause look, if we add some JavaScript inside of our render function and we ask show header, just like we just did, and uh, Right here, we do the same thing. Um, no h1, no hello, and we close this with, and we save this. You can see that currently it says no hello, and the reason for that is because our no our show header is initially set to false. However, let's create a function and let me create a button. So button. Um, show header basically when we click this button we're going to just turn the show header state into true right so uh, and set show header equal to true okay let's save this and when I click here you can see that it changes and this is a very handy way of doing it there are other ways of conditional rendering and I taught you guys one way in the last video which was by using the the two end sign. However, this way is a lot better. Now I want to talk about 
array destructuring. And this is like these two topics aren't specifically about React, they are more about ES6 and JavaScript in general. However, they are very useful in React. And this is important because on the whenever we want to use an array as our state, uh, we can't simply use normal JavaScript and like push a value to the array. We need to use array destructuring in order to add more values. And how I'm gonna show you guys is basically I'm gonna create a state called uh, list of names and set list of names, right? And this is going to be an array. Let me turn this into an array. Okay, now let's add a, create a function, create a button actually, because I want to keep adding stuff to the array. So add um, name and I'm going to create a a state, right? So I'm going to create another state, which is going to represent a, like an input. We're going to write names in an input and then add them to your, to an array. So name, um, set name, and this is going to be a, a string. Okay. And uh, let me write it on click and uh, here. Inside of our on click, we're going to set list of names, and here's the good part: when we are when we get our our name, our variable, like the the name of the person we want to add into the array, we need to create, we need to write the square brackets, and write three dots, which will represent we want to get everything from that are currently in our array, and we've got to write the array name, so list of names and then a comma, and then the value we want to add to the array. So in our case, we want to add name. And this is the basic way of doing it. If you're using React hooks, you can't, like in the use state hook, you can't uh, do it in another way. You can't push it to the array. You got to do it this way. So if you guys are not currently going to use this to a React project, just keep in mind about this video because you can come back and look at the syntax on how to do it. But I'm also want, I also want to set name equal to like an empty string because we whenever we write a name and we submit that name we want to be able to write another name and change the state so I'm also going to create an input so you guys can see so type type text and let's create an on change like we did on the last video and um, let me get it event and uh, let me set name equal to the event dot target if you don't know what I'm doing I posted a video like my last video on the series I taught you guys how to get values from inputs so now I'm setting everything and I need to close this so um, okay now I'm getting everything from the input and I'm setting it to the name and then whenever I click the button I'm submitting the value right so and I'm also I will I also want to console log so you guys can see it for now. So console log the list of names and let's see. Whenever I click the button, I'll see the changes happening. So console and I want to add my name, Pedro. Add name. And currently there's nothing because it was the first name, but if I try to add something like hey you can see that now Pedro is in it and if I try like uh, Jessica or whatever and I add a name now Pedro and Hey are in it and if I try John you can see the pattern now Jessica will be inside of it now you can see it's working right so I also want to map I want to show how to how to like represent a list in the screen and this is a very interesting way of th there's a very interesting way of doing it so Basically, you can't just render a, a list and you will know what to do. You need to go through every single element in the list or the array and do something different with it. And how you do it is basically you grab the list, so list of names, you write dot map, and you, the dot map is a function, right? And the first thing it gets is the value, like in the first parameter, it gives the value of the current element you're looping through the array. So 
it will give, for example, for the first value, it will give Pedro. For the second, it will give Hey. For the third, it will give Jessica, you know? So I'm going to grab value, value, and let me do this. Now, inside of here, I can do something different for, for each value of the array. And I'm actually going to do the same thing for everyone. So I'm going to return um, an h1 tag which will have the value. So I'm just going to return a, a header for each of the values of the array. And uh, I want to see how it looks. Okay, so basically currently there's nothing in the array. But if I add Pedro, you can see that now Pedro appears. And if I add John, you can see that now John appears. Sorry, my camera died again. So basically, the, the only thing you need to do is write a key value over here on the top and write a key property to whatever you're, you're rendering. And this doesn't matter at all. It won't make a difference. It will only remove the, the error. So like Pedro, and you can see that now the error doesn't appear, right? So I hope you guys learned from this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. These are three topics, I, I, I guess, that are really important, but are not worthy of making like a whole video on it, you know? So I just think they can be like a good stepping stone for the next videos I'm going to post. I'm thinking of doing more like project based videos because honestly, this is literally the best way of learning React. This is how I learned it. I, I just literally just started making projects and projects and projects. And I'm going to be making more separate videos on like more intense topics like like API fetching and uh, trying to and like trying to separate your project in different components and reusing them maybe like style components or how to how to make how to use forms in react which like in react there's different ways of doing everything so i'm going to try to make as many videos of, as i can and yeah if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a comment below telling me what you guys want to see next and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys later